What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can use the compositor in Blender in order to add a color or a gradient background. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so our example model is the Japanese Bridge Garden from Libble Kibble. And you can download this. Um, I'll link to it in the notes down below, but you can download this from Sketchfab. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use the compositor and we wanna set this up where we can create our rendering, a rendered image right here. And then we wanna use this to add a background. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna jump over into our compositing section right here. So I'm gonna jump over into my compositing section. Remember the first thing you wanna do is check the box for use notes. Now, a lot of people like to use a preview note over here. I actually like to just drag a window in and then just add a um, image node or an image editor node right here. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our render settings. We wanna make sure that we've rendered our image. And so we wanna make sure that we've done that. And I probably actually wanna set this up where it's rendering in cycles. Um, we'll go ahead and set this to GPU. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to toggle denoising on as well. Okay, so then once we've done that, um, this now has some data that we can use um, for our rendering. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on the drop down right here. Now I wanna view my render result. And so again, you could do this with a viewer node over here, but I really prefer to do it on the left-hand side. Okay, and so the first thing that I want is I want this to render out with a transparent background. And we can do that by going into our cycles settings, scrolling down into film and checking the box for transparent in the background. If I jump back into my viewport, you can kind of see that. So if you toggle that transparent, notice how it's either adding a color or not in your scene when it renders out. Okay, and so one thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to re-render this image um, so, we've, so that we've got that new data in here, right? So notice how now when this renders out, this has that kind of like alpha look showing you that have transparency in the background. Okay, and so now we wanna jump in here and what we wanna do is we wanna add um, a background color. So to add a background color, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, do a shift A and I'm gonna add a mix node. So we're gonna bring a mix node in here and we're just gonna click. And so what I wanna do is I wanna bring the image into one of the image slots in here. So in this case, I'm gonna put it in the first slot. Then I'm gonna drag this image slot right here. Now notice how that doesn't necessarily give us a fantastic result. Um, first thing we wanna do is drag that image into the second slot rather than the first slot. Okay, and so now what we need to do is we need to get a color in the background. And right now, if I make a change to this, right? So if I wanted like a blue background, notice how if I adjust this color, nothing is actually happening. That's because we haven't actually told this where to put that color yet. So what I wanna do is I want to take the alpha and I wanna drag it into the factor. Remember the alpha is basically that transparency that's being added in my scene. And so notice what that's doing is that's taking these and it's putting um, the blue color or whatever color you select, right? You can pick a red, you can pick a green, you could really do whatever you want in here. And it's basically putting that wherever that alpha is inside of your scene. So it's really easy to add a color background, but what we wanna do is we wanna create something that's a little less uniform. We wanna create a um, gradient background that goes from like a darker color to a lighter color across our image. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take this color and we wanna kinda of create a mask where this transitions from like a dark to a light, right? And you can use this to create several different effects, but what we need to do first is we need to start by adding a mask. So we can just do a shift A, and just search for a mask. Notice how there's a few different, um, there's a few different masks in here. In this case, we're gonna start with maybe like a box mask right here. And I'm just gonna click in my scene. And so one thing that I do wanna do in this case is I do wanna do a shift A and I wanna add a viewer node. Um, and what the viewer node is going to do is it's gonna let me drag the mask into my image right here. And I can see what this is doing, right? And so if I look at this, this is a very simple node right now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to set the X, Y position, right? So I can move this. When I move this, the box is going to move around in the 3D space like this. And you can also adjust the size using these sliders right here. So we can do like a 0.25 by 0.25. Um, and this is just kind of setting the size of this box mask in here. And we're gonna adjust that more in a second. But at the moment, 
if we were to use this as a mask, right? So if we were to drop this in here, it wouldn't really be super helpful because it would just mask out like a square piece of our color. But what we want is we want to add a gradient in here. So I'm going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a blur node. In this case, we'll just go with the standard blur node in here. But all I want to do is I just want to use this and notice how there's a bunch of different blur types in here, like the Gaussian and the fast Gaussian and all these others. Um, but we're just going to take this and we're just going to use this to add a little bit of blur around the outside of our box, right? So if I was to type in maybe say like 35 and 35, notice what that's doing is that's creating a box that is basically blurred around the edges. And again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust maybe the size a little bit. So I'm going to set this to like 0.1 and 0.1 like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extend out that blur a little bit more. So maybe like 50 and 50. So we'll go ahead and use that for right now. But notice how we've gotten what we want, which is a dark along the outside and then a light along the inside. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use this to add a color to our background. So if I was to drag this image into our image right here, notice how it's going to replace that background back behind our image. And so one thing that we can go ahead and we can do is we can go ahead and we can adjust the size based on what we're seeing here. So we can use this to kind of set the way that our background is going to look in the background. Um, and so we can adjust how far out this blur happens just by using these sliders right here, just like this. And so what I don't like about this right now is what this is doing is this is just adding a black and white mask in here and it's just using it as the background. Well, we don't necessarily want to do that. What we want to do is we want to add an actual color to this node. And so the way that I want to do that is I want to do a shift A and I want to add a mix node um, before my other mix node over here. So I'm going to add this mix node in here. Well, what that's going to do, and I want this blur to go into the second not the first, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to adjust the color of the background. But one thing you're going to notice about this right here is at the moment, notice how it's not doing anything because this is set to mix. What we want is we want to set this to add. And so when we set this to add, notice what we start getting in here is we start getting this light background in here um, that's acting as kind of like the transitional color between the light and the dark. But now what it's doing is it's adding that blue to the white from the blur like this. And I can go ahead and I can drag this down if I want to. I can make this different colors, other things like that. So fairly similar to what we've done before. Now what we might do in a situation like this one, and this is a little bit of a harsh blue. I don't necessarily want it to be that harsh. And, and so one thing that we might do is we might adjust the position of this mask. So in this case, right, I'm gonna move this off to the left and I'm gonna move it up. And so notice how I can do that using this tool right here. And so if we come in here and we adjust this size, notice how we can get a more subtle transition across our image like this. So I can move this to the left or to the right like this, but now we've got this kind of like transition happening across our surface right here. And again, notice how if I make this blur bigger, then um, you can see less of the rectangular nature of that blur and more of just kind of the color transitioning across the scene right here, right? So the bigger I make it, the bigger the transition is going to be in here. And again, you may want to play around with your lefts and rights a little bit um, in order to get those different results. But now we've got this kind of, uh, we've got this blur going across our scene. And so one thing you might want is you might not want this transition to go from a white to your color. You might want to add a transition that goes from one color to another color. And so this is something where there may be a step that I'm missing in here, but what you can do is you can take this factor or you take this image and plug it into the factor right here, and then you can use two different colors in here. And so you can use this in order to kind of transition between two colors, right? And then if you move that mask, right, like this, so if I move it down a little bit, notice how what I can do is I can use it to get this kind of like transition from this pink color to this blue color 
in your scene. Now, I will say that this is kind of uh, washing these colors out a little bit. That may be a setting thing, or it may just have to do with the blur that I'm using in here, but you can kind of play around with this. But this is a quick, easy way to add a gradient background to your images in Blender. All right, so I will link to my full compositor series in the notes down below, as well as to a link where you can download the example files if you want to download any of these and follow along. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.